What's up, viewers? Welcome to differentbrains.org. I'm your host, Adrian Susano, and you're watching The Week in Neurodiversity. To kick things off, a nonverbal girl with Down syndrome is using art to share her story. From that very first day, we gave her a canvas and, and paint and, and tools. She blew us away. Uh. She started inviting me into this world of hers that was through her art. Yes, ma'am. It was just really amazing when she first started painting for us to watch her and, oh. and just see that she really knew what she was doing and she was literally coming to life. Now let's take a look at how a facility in Nebraska is using music to help patients with Alzheimer's. I think he's a little, a little happier when he's listening to it. Bob is one of the 26 people at Sumner Place who are participating in the Music and Memory program. Sumner Place is one of four facilities in the nation to be selected by Brown University for the pilot program. You go back to their peak years, um, 16 to 26 years old, and we, the years that have the most impact in their life. Sumner Place puts that music on an iPod, and residents can listen to it whenever they need to. And now let's see how NYU is conducting a study on a less examined symptom of Parkinson's. Here, neurologist Milton Biazzoni is testing patient Joan Carrion's gait. It's part of a study underway on a less examined but also debilitating symptom of Parkinson's, visuospatial dysfunction, or problems with visual perception. These are very subtle, so patients do not notice that they have that. Problems with color discrimination, contrast sensitivity. These vision problems can be dangerous, impacting fine motor skills and general movement. An organization in Texas is spreading awareness for dyslexia. Let's take a look at how they're doing it. I use a computer for like, there's like books on there and I have like my own account and so like it'll help me read it. Educators and parents are learning more about what's available for those with this disability. The International Association of Dyslexia and Dyslexia Smart want people to know that they're not alone and that they are here to help them with their challenges. We are different, but... It's a good difference. And finally, over in New York, a pair of twins on the autism spectrum have developed a love for running marathons. 28-year-olds Alex and Jamie Schneider, who are autistic, took up running when they were teenagers. The family has competed in more than 600 races. Alex has even run the New York City Marathon. Now he and Jamie seem to have an extended family among other runners new friends, a whole new community of runners that are just amazing, that have, you know, just become family to us. And while you're here at Different Brains, be sure to check out some of our other content, like Exploring Different Brains with Dr. Hacky Reitman and the Spectrally Speaking podcast hosted by Becca Laurie and Dr. Katherine Cody. That wraps it up for this episode. Which story caught your eye the most? Be sure to let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and remember, you keep advocating and we'll keep bringing the news.